Hey, it's Ted McGrath, and in today's video, I want to talk to you about why small events lead to profitable outcomes. Number one, a lot of people say that you have to do a big event and get lots of people in the seminar room to actually be profitable. And while having lots of people in a seminar room is good, it's just not true that that's the key to being profitable. So what I've discovered is, first and foremost, the key to a profitable live event, number one, is actually doing it. And this is the first thing that I want you to really get focused on, is if you don't do the live event, if you don't put it on, it'll never be profitable. And so many times people get this uh, illusion that I have to have 100 people or even 50 people in a room. One of my clients recently, his name's Rich, he has a chiropractic business and he put on his first event ever and I was on him going, Rich, when are you gonna do your event? When are you gonna do your event? When are you gonna do your event? You know, and it took him like months to book it. But finally, he worked up the courage, he did it, and he thought 12 people were gonna show up in the seminar room. And 12 people at a $1,000 or $1,200 price point, whatever he did, it would have been a good first seminar in terms of 12 people. And he had 50% less come. He had six people show up in the room. And so going into the weekend, he was a little nervous and he was like, man, like, well, what am I supposed to do here? Because I've only got six people coming. And he, and I just told him, I said, listen, six people doing your first event is profitable. Now, do you always make the money that you want to make at your first event? Is that the only profitability factor? No. The success and the wisdom, the wisdom and experience that you get from doing your first live event is profit. That skill set and that wisdom will take you on throughout your career to make you lots of money. So doing your first one, even if you don't put any money up on the scoreboard of doing it, you didn't get into this live event business to only do one, you're gonna do this over and over and over and over again. So doing your first one, no matter what, going and doing it is a success, and that's what you need to get through your head out of the gates. Now Rich, with six people in the room, made $45,000. So that is really, really good. So did he financially, was he profitable at his live event? Absolutely. So that's one of the keys uh, to look at as you're doing your first live event is, is getting people there and just doing it, number one, doing it is success. Doing it is profit. Profit in wisdom and experience and profit in money if you make a sale in the room and you upsell to your coaching programs. Number two, the second aspect of this is location. And you, when you do a smaller event like Rich did, he actually had his office. So he didn't need a big seminar room. He didn't need the big overhead expenses. And he was able to do it in his office and he had no overhead for that. So all $45,000 that he made is essentially a good profit margin for him because he didn't have big expenses for it. So a lot of times when you do your seminar and you come into rooms like a message to millions, my seminar, my superstar speaker training, which hopefully you're coming and you've claimed your tickets to come to the next one. When you come to these events, sometimes you see the production, you see the big seminar room, there's an overhead expense to that. And, you know, we've done that over years and years and years of doing seminars. But if you're doing your first one, you could get a small room and keep the overhead low. So having a small group doesn't mean you can't be profitable. You can have a small room and a small group and be profitable. So number two is keep the overhead low. Um, you know, be smart about where you're doing it. And, you know, keeping the overhead low is in proportion to what you actually charge for the ticket. So point number three is... Uh, a free event versus a paid event. So there's a difference between a profitable live event when you're doing a free ticket versus a profitable live event with a paid ticket. When somebody pays to come, you have a greater chance of being profitable at your live event. Why? Because they've paid to come in the room. So even in Rich's situation, he thought he was undercharging for $1,200 for a small group of people. It was still lucrative to him because he was actually able to make an upsell to a higher tier coaching program in the room. So a lot of times you hear free, get the butts in the seats, but you then all of a sudden you have a lot of free people, a lot of unqualified people in the room. Unqualified people does not equal profit. People who have paid money and invested money to be there is more likely to lead to a profitable live event where you're making money at the event. So when you have a choice between free and paid, I always say paid. So number three point is go for paid events. Number four is high quality people. So a paid person will tend to be more high quality, right? Because they've invested something. 
But focusing on high quality of people means you can focus on less people in the seminar room, which means you don't have to stress out that I need to have 50 people in the seminar room or 100 people. If you just focus on I'm gonna get 10 high quality people in the room, like one of my clients, Alex Moscow, like 26, 27 years old, he did his first seminar ever. He got 10 people in a seminar room. And in the seminar room, he did $71,000 in sales with 10 people. And he's 26, 27 years old, and he also has a stutter. So he focused on high quality. He focused on more smaller groups, special attention. And he focused on showing up in that room with those high quality people and giving them an experience of deep dive coaching to where you could interact with them be more intimate with them, give them a greater experience, and when he's more intimate with them, he's coaching them and he's giving them a greater experience, that's going to lead to people making bigger decisions. So not only is there this focus of high quality people in the room, there's this focus of when you have a smaller group, you can be more intimate, you can be more directive in coaching them, you can provide greater value to them, and you create a greater bond and a greater community, and as a result, people feel more special attention and they will also make bigger decisions to invest in your coaching programs. So don't worry about the size of the room. Focus on getting high quality people in the room. Focus on making them pay something, right? And price point, a lot of times people think, well, I have to charge a thousand or two thousand dollars. Price point always doesn't dictate whether they're high quality or not. You know, I've had clients of mine like one of my clients, Brandon Hawk, at his first event, his early bird special was only $297 per ticket. But the types of people he was speaking to, in terms of knowing that I'm calling a quality person, even though I'm giving them a deal for $297, I know they're the type of person that I want in the room. They're the ideal person that I'm targeting. So that leads me to the next point, which is you have to have an ideal target audience that you're going after. Not just anybody could come and get benefit from my stuff. You know, in my rooms, it's coaches, it's speakers, it's experts, it's practitioners. It's very targeted on who I want. So I can be very targeted and laser focused towards the ideal client, knowing that when I make the offer, 100% of the room is qualified and wants the offer versus I just got a lot of people in the room, I don't know my audience, and I'm making this general offer that's not gonna convert. So getting really clear on who is the ideal person you want in the room, and if you make an offer for $297 to that person, uh, they could be worth millions and still come to the seminar. The fact that they're only paying $297, which is, can be looked at as a low ticket price, doesn't mean that they're still not quality. So price doesn't have everything to do with some somebody being quality, right? A low price point at $297, you can still target towards high quality people, and then they're still paying something, their high quality audience, their target audience, those two things combine where they pay something and they're a highly targeted audience equals profitable live events. So I want you to keep that in mind. And one of the takeaways for you right now of what I want you to put into action is I want you to one, pick the price point of your event right now. What's the price point of your event going to be? Number one. Number two, pick the date. Because what I said earlier is point number one is most people don't do the live event. They never do it. They never pick the date. If you don't pick the date right now, you're not going to do it. So pick the date, pick the price point right now, and those are the two things you can put down, and that way you have some solid actions to take in terms of directive of going, okay, I know the date, I know the price point, and then third is pick the ideal audience. Who's the ideal person that you want there? And you use that ideal person as a benchmark of going, okay, I want all the people that I call to be in line with this ideal person. And then you're highly focused and targeted on who you're reaching out to for your live event. So that's my advice on how small events can lead to profitable outcomes. There's your takeaways of what you should start getting into action and doing. I hope it serves you and I'll see you in the next video.